Should I? Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's wonderful to be back. Can everybody stand for a second? Oh, my goodness. And can we dim the lights just a little bit? Would that be okay? Would it, would it mess up the, uh, the video recording? Would it mess it up? I don't know. If it messes it up, it's okay, but I'd love to have the lights dimmed a little bit. <laughs> so turn to somebody next to you and say, the secret is the secret. The secret is the secret. Turn to the other person. Yeah, now you got it. <laughs> now you got it. So, so listen to this, ladies. The secret to refreshing is the secret place. The secret to refreshing is the secret place. And the secret to refreshing is the one that inhabits the secret place. You can be seated. The one that inhabits the secret place is the lover of our soul. And there are some things that I'm going to be sharing tonight that I believe Holy Spirit put them in my spirit. I believe Holy Spirit put them in my heart because they're parts of the word that we don't necessarily hear very often. But they are necessary for the growth and development of our lives. They're necessary tools and equipment for us to be who we are in Christ, in fullness, not in measure, but in fullness. How many of you are starved to see the realities of the kingdom in this lifetime, in your lifetime, in your children, in your grandchildren, in your workplace, to see the realities of the kingdom. I'm talking about the lowering of the chariot. I'm talking about the lowering of the heavens. I'm talking about entering in to the fullness of the Godhead bodily, fruitfully, truly, one, as one, as one, as one, hear me, as one, as one, Presbyterian, Catholic, Baptist, tongue-talking, whatever, as one, seeing the power of the Spirit of the living God displayed throughout our community, seeing it, being eyewitnesses of it. Can you imagine being an eyewitness? And you can stand up and say, I saw it with my own eyes. This person has been in a wheelchair for as long as I've known them, but I saw it with my own eyes. That is the word that I, I, with everything in me, I believe Holy Spirit is speaking to us individually and as a body to become as one. Because when we become as one, we will see the power of the Spirit released amongst us. And there will not be one left behind. Not some in the front running, not some in the middle wavering, not some in the back lacking, but all running as one, as one. Hallelujah. Mm. <sighs> okay. So. We've just witnessed Hollywood, a believers, a Christian branch of Hollywood come out with a movie called The War Room. How many of you have seen the movie? Thank you, Father. <laughs> I tell you, Mike and I and a friend of ours went to see it, and at the end, I couldn't help it. I started cheering and clapping, and everybody else started cheering and clapping, but I tell you, there is... There is a, 
a blanketing of the Spirit of God over this nation. And God is speaking through many, many avenues and ways. When you have ears to hear, you begin to hear Holy Spirit. He's speaking. When you are asking questions, trust me, beloved, you will get answers. And it isn't always going to come from a pulpit. It will come from many, many different ways. But tonight, as we give God thanks for this movie and the release of this understanding of the power of the war room, I want to call you all. As a matter of fact, um, at one point during that worship, when the drums, something happened with the drums, there was a shift. There was, an, um, there was a powerful shift with the drums, and that beat began to sound, and there was a call. It was God calling. He was calling. He was calling, calling, calling. Oh, our spirits began to burn. Did you feel that? Your spirit began to burn. It began to burn. But with that release of that movie, I, I, I see many, many people refocusing their lives. I hear different ones saying, oh, I, did you have your war room? Have you found a war room in your house? Oh, I've got my war room. And, 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 and they're visiting that war room more often. Wonderful. But I'm here to say that as much and as necessary as a war room is, we need a love room. We need a place where we meet him face to face. We need a place where we're not asking for anything. I'm not knocking the movie. I'm, I, am, I, am, I am just, I'm trying to pull your hearts together with me to say, beloved, Find a place in your home that is your love room. Whatever, a closet, a piece of the carpet next to your bed, wherever it is, that place that becomes holy and sanctified, it becomes your meeting place, it becomes your tabernacle, it becomes the place where you meet with God and you can be home doing anything and when you pass that place, oh, it just calls to you and you just want to get on your face. You just want to get on your face. It's the face-to-face -face encounters. It is that place where you pour out your heart of love to God. Remember Matthew 6 says he already knows what we have need of. So yes, we need a war room, but we need a love room. We need the power of love in our lives. We need the power of the understanding that God's love is holy and it is pure. And in Isaiah 66 verse 2, he says this. He says, to this man will I look. To this man. You want to know? Have you ever asked, God, how do I get your attention? How can I attract you? How can I be lovely to you? How can I be desirable to you? How can I, how, what can I do? What can I say? What can I give? How can I talk to you? What things can I say to you that will attract your presence? Not just when we're all together and the corporate anointing is present, but when I'm home by myself and all of the things that are going on in my life and I can lay down my head and I can go prostrate on my face and how what can I do what can I say have you ever asked him that to have his presence to have his presence waves of his presence and his love wash over you waves and waves of his presence wash over you and Kim's not there, and that team isn't there. It's just you in the quiet, just you on the carpet, just you and him. Isaiah 66 verse two says, to this man will I look, to this man will I look, to this woman will I look, to that one 
that is humble, the one that is humble, that's contrite in heart. In other words, not puffed up. And that trembles at my word. Ooh. If I'm hearing anything from Holy Spirit, I'm hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. I want my body to return to me, to come back to me with fear and with trembling because they've seen me, really seen me. And there are many ways we can see him. Beloved, there are many ways we can see him through the words of another, through the reading of this word. There are many ways we can see him. But there is nothing like cultivating that time on your face just with him and you and crying out for his presence day after day after day. He says, hear this, he says, give me your minutes. I will turn them into days. Give me your minutes, and I will turn them into days. Start out with minutes on your face. Just you and him, nothing else, no one else. Letting nothing disrupt that union Letting nothing come between you. Nothing. And let him present himself to you as you present yourself to him. Let him show you who he is. Let him touch your heart. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Come, Holy Spirit. Seal that word. <sighs> there is no greater refreshing Oh, then laying down on your face <laughs> in his presence. <sighs> you won't need anybody to pump you up. You will learn his ways. You'll learn his moods. You'll learn quickly that he's very jealous. You'll learn very quickly that he's very fiery. He's very melting. He melts. He melts. He melts a heart, he melts barriers, he melts mountains, he melts excuses, he melts pains, sorrows, griefs, 
he melts. <laughs> Inconveniences of the flesh. He melts them. Mm. First Thessalonians 5, 19, I believe, says, in the King James, it says, quench not the spirit. But I want to say it like this, don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out. Maintain that fire. Maintain that fire. Be transparent. Be clear. Be clean. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouths. No matter how we feel, no matter what others have done, let no communication that is corrupt come out of our mouths. But let it be seasoned with grace that it may bring edification to the hearer. And what does it say after that in Ephesians 4? It says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He is your seal. How do we live that way? We live that way by cultivating that time, giving him those minutes, giving him those moments, making it a reality in your life, not giving lip service. Yes, I prayed today. I prayed yesterday. We're talking about something much more of substance, of much more worth. What is more critical for the heart? What is more important for the heart? Is it entertainment? Is it social life? What is it? What's more critical for the health of our heart and the health of our soul? And to find that place, get on your face and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you. I need you. I don't want to read about others healing the sick. I don't want to read about others prophesying in the street. I don't want to read about others or hear about others doing miracles and seeing manifestations while myself and my family and my friends and my co-workers are falling to pieces. I need you. We need you. We need you to teach us. We don't need programs. We don't need steps. We need his voice. We need his unction. We need a breath of God that 
blows in our bones to where they burn and we carry his presence wherever we go and the seas part and the mountains melt and diseases go away and the lame that can't walk leap up like a heart and the lives of people are changed because of a true gospel We all have that invitation. <laughs> we all have that open door. We all have it if we take it. <laughs> we'll not be the same. will not be the same. We will care more. We will weep more. We won't be able to turn channels. When the suffering it's on that screen. We won't be able to turn our eyes away from human suffering. And it won't be because we'll be forced. Because nothing in the kingdom works that way. It'll be because you'll melt into him. And he'll melt into you. He's a good shepherd, and he leads, and he leads with love and with gentleness. If you can find that place with him, you will have found the treasure of your life. If you find that place with him, you'll need not anybody else teach you because his very Holy Spirit, his very unction will teach you. And your life will be a life of discovery and confirmation. And you will say to yourself, I heard it first in the secret place. You will not fall prey. You will not be deceived. You won't fall away because of man's error. You won't need to fear. He will teach you. He will instruct you. He will take you by the hand. He will speak words on the inside of you that will touch your spirit, your soul, and your body. Many of your ailments will be healed because of his word being spoken into you. Many of the soul issues will be done away with. We'll finally have the fruit of the Spirit catch up with all the gifts. We'll finally see gentleness in the body of Christ. We'll see kindness. We'll see self-control. We'll see discipline. 
We'll see sold out ones and sacrificial ones that won't even think it's a sacrifice. They won't even compute. This isn't a sacrifice. This is an honor. You won't be deceived because he will speak and your spirit will bear witness and the truth will maintain you and sustain you. You won't need to go to counseling you won't need to pay someone to walk you through issues of your life if you'll just give him your minutes. He will turn them into days. If you'll just get on your face and say, I need you. I need you, Holy Spirit. Come be with me. You said that there's a place by you. He said it in Exodus. There's a place by me. Come. There's a place right by me. I want to sit there, Daddy. I want to lay there, Daddy. This, this, this place is not the last thing on your mind it won't be after a while it'll be all you'll think about i promise you i promise you it'll be all you'll think about it'll be all that you'll want and yearn for you'll want to get home from work just so you can lay there with him you You'll be there for hours and you won't even realize it. And if you have and you're afforded the opportunity even days, and people will say, did you see this on TV? Did you see that new show on TV? What? What? I'm, I'm not in that loop anymore. I don't know what's the latest or the greatest. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I have some other things here, but he's speaking. He's speaking. Come away with me. Come away. I promise you, your day will go well. Time wise, you'll be amazed at how well ordered your day will be. You won't be rushing around. You won't be trying to get here and there, trying to make it on time. I promise. I promise. He, he will, listen, he will, he will say it's time to get up now. I promise you. He will become your internal alarm clock. You'll cease from being all over the place and disheveled and discombobulated and confused and trying to figure out what you should do and indecisiveness. He will become that internal alarm that'll say, go get in the shower. But, but, oh, but, Lord, I wanted to read this portion. Of, no, go, go get in the shower. 
And while in the shower, he'll speak to you. All of a sudden, you're, you'll see things. You'll understand things. I know you have hundreds of questions for God. And they range from your own personal life to your children to what will happen in five years and 10 and what about when we retire or what about when these things happen or those things happen? I promise you he'll answer them. I promise you, you will never know rest like what I'm talking about. It's a divine impartation of rest that just sweeps over your soul. And you, you have a word in season that you can speak to someone that's weary and falling to pieces because you've been there, because you've been with him. We may never meet again like this, ladies. Please hear what Holy Spirit is saying to your heart. This is not my usual way of ministering. But I feel such a constraining here inside. This is important. This is critical. We don't know what the future holds. My favorite quote when I was born again at 21, but we know who holds our future. And that's wonderful to know who holds our future. But that's not enough. It's not enough knowing that he holds the future. He wants partnership, oneness, togetherness, where you don't know where you end and he begins, or he ends and you begin, a oneness. He's beautiful. I promise you that. And when you when you see him, you'll never want another thing to pass before your eyes that might be polluted. <laughs> You'll never again see anything or want anything that's unclean to be <laughs> before your uh, eyes. <laughs> You'll never want to hear anything that's not of life. <laughs> And you'll never want again to speak. What is not full of substance. I promise you, you can do your work. I promise you, you can be realistic. You can be practical in this you can be even more productive where you are because you're more trustworthy 
because you're there on time. Because he leads you with wisdom. He leads you with helping you solve difficult problems. He leads you and people will be drawn to you because they will see a sea of glass in your eyes. There's a calm there. There's a calm there. There's a calm because you have walked on the sea of glass with him. You'll be like a magnet that people, you become irresistible. They might hate you, but they'll be drawn to you. And your conversation will change. It won't be the chitty chatty office gossip. Same old, warmed over, old, stale. There will be freshness in your words. Not a name it and claim it. No. A reality. A reality. Like Jesus, he didn't go to the lame man and say, well, just claim it and name it. He said, what do you need? So simple, so practical, and so beautiful. What do you need? How can I help meet that need? I don't think it would be appropriate for me to go somewhere else. Hallelujah. I would invite you to close your eyes and just enter your home where you live. And just walk through the rooms of your home and survey. Is there a place there in your home that you can lie down on your face and go low and call out to him? And whisper to him. And yearn for him. Thank you, Lord. If you've found that place and you see it in your mind's eye, can you lift your hand? Lift your hand to the Lord. Father, We ask that you consecrate that place. We ask that you set it apart for your own pleasure. That you would visit with us there. 
come be with us. Come spend time with us and talk with us. Breathe into us again and again and again. Precious Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you. We set aside formulas and steps and keys and everything else that man can say. Come be with us in the quiet of the morning. When no one else is awake, when it's still dark outside, come. Take us back to the first love. Take us back to when we first glanced your way. us how to set our gaze on you. Just like Kim can hold a note on that instrument. Teach us and show us how we can hold that gaze. Thank you, Father. Coming back to first love when you first touched, when you first held us in your arms. Oh, how the world fell away! 
Every addiction, every need just fell away. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Wipe the hair away from our foreheads As you remind us You are the resurrection and the life There is no fear of death There is no fear of man Only behold me I cast out every fear, I cast out all terror from you. I will whisper so you can come close I speak only truth I do not lie I convince you Days running wild with me, running wild with me, seeing what I see, knowing what I know, seeing your world the way I see.
restorer of old paths to walk in. Ask for the old way. beginning I'm still waiting here it's good to be zealous it's good to do good works it's good to be busy in my kingdom But don't neglect me. Don't forget me. It can be all about me. Without me. Don't measure your life by the things you do for me, but measure it by the times you say you love me.
I know you guys can sense there's something else the Lord wants to do before we wrap up and um, I have a friend, Mary Haas, she's an awesome woman of God. In fact, those are your two paintings, from two women's conferences, aren't they? The Open Heavens, this one, and the Holy Spirit. But, um, I sense that there was, a, um, there was supposed to be a, a word given in tongues and interpreted. I was wondering who was going to be bold enough. So we were up there, Mike and I were interceding for great boldness. So, yeah, you got it? All right, amen. So we, we're going to jump into that and, uh, and and just, it's so good to see uh, such a peace on all you. That's the beginning of refreshing is, is stepping into rest and peace. So let's kick it off. Let's release it. Amen. Father, we thank you for the message of intimacy that you brought through your daughter. And we thank you for that place of presence that she ushered us into. And for the worship, Papa, that took us deeper. So, Papa, we celebrate this night and what you are doing in each of our lives. And we give you the glory and honor and praise. And, Papa, we go out with your song this night. yo You are beautiful to me, you are my children, you carry my love, I am within you, you're on a journey of making peace with your heart. For blessed are the peacemakers, they are the sons and daughters of God. Make peace with your heart as you sit in my presence. Cause I'm crazy about you, I've made you in my image. I'm crazy about you, I'm crazy about you. It's a new day, it's a new day, I've called you to myself. I'm crazy about you, I'm so in love with you. Leave here rejoicing, I am for you. So we will see you all tomorrow night at 7, and we are just so excited that you are all here. Uh, uh, Rose, I want to thank you. If you guys heard Rose before, I saw a lot of people raise their hands that they heard her before, but, you know, the, the Holy Spirit was just so heavy on you. And I believe the reason why the Holy Spirit was doing that is because to, to be refreshed is good. To stay always refreshed is better. So the Lord doesn't want to refresh you so that you go and find dry place again. He wants to refresh you and keep you constantly hydrated and full of love and full of joy and full of peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So as you go, uh, just contemplate, why is the Lord so urgently calling to the intimacy? Because he wants to keep you plugged in, in the vine, full of him, full of life. And so as you go in peace, just just c continue pondering over that. Continue pondering on how weighty the presence of the Lord was on that word because of how urgent his heart is to keeping you plugged in and never quenching or never um, never quenching or, or um, what's the other one? We have two of them. There's quenching and there's grieving the Holy Spirit. So we don't want to ever grieve or quench the Holy Spirit. And so uh, just, just continue to realize our lifeline was really poured out to re reconnect and 
in a, in a much deeper way. So we'll never end up in a dry place again. So I believe that this is going to be um, a place where there's many testimonies. And some of you guys are like, there's going to be a new you coming out of this weekend. Amen. Can you receive that? Tracy, do you have any more last minute announcements? Miss Whittington, do you have any? You have some? All right, Jen. Thank you, David. This is David. Oh. <laughs> um, for those of you who had asked earlier about paying with a card, um, I do have the ability to take cards now to pay for the registration fees for those of you who are able to do so. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that if you can, uh, you can see me when we're done tonight. Thank you. And, and also just a reminder on the advertisement that went out, it said there was a Friday 2.30. That was an error on the, the card. There's a Friday, 7 p.m., and then a Saturday, 2 through 4.30, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So it's like an all-day Saturday besides lunch and dinner. Do you have something to share? Come on. Come on. Anybody. This is what it's about. And then also, Rose will be speaking Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So that's you know, ladies, I pressed to get here tonight. There's an urgency don't waste your time on the wrong things. This is about you getting everything. You can't blame it on anybody. This is a stealing away time for a meeting with the master. The word that came forth tonight, I can't be here tomorrow, but I wanted to leave an essence of the mixture of the body of Christ coming into the fullness of the one new man because we need each other in this time and season. And it is time to wake up in the body of Christ. And you can only wake up when you wake up with him. So I'm calling you to a place that you lay down everything else and you get in his face. You get into the worship. And if somebody is distracting you, I've learned to turn my face to the wall. It's time. It's time. It's time. He wants to touch every heart. But you've got to desire him. He's sitting right beside you. He's sitting in your car. Everywhere you go, you can have a meeting with the master. And you don't have to say a word. He's every answer that you need. He's saying, I need you to get off of the milk and come into the meat of me. And that means a crushing in you. It means really laying down all that stuff that distracts your time from him. Because this is about you growing up in God. Because nobody else can grow up for God but you. It is a one-on-one -on -one encounter. But the one-on-one -on -one brings us to the place where my sister described because that's what her desire is, the zeal of the Lord. I don't want to sit in a body anymore where we don't talk to each other. We can't even look at each other. He says, show them my love. How can we go if we don't show them his love? His waterfall is him. His waterfall is him. Don't step into the river partway. It's time to get overflowed because out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart will speak. Flow in the overflow. Have so much. Don't make any apologies for getting all of God. This is a watering place. So lay down and be watered. Lay down and be crushed. Let the oil flow. But it's got to flow from the new vine. He says, I want new wine skins. So be pressed. 
to be filled again. So if I don't get back, I'm going with every one of you. Because we're pressing towards the mark of the high calling. For we are the body united. This is a united body. There should be no division in God's house. And in his house, there is life and life more abundantly. So I just needed to say, I love you. But don't leave anything on the table. He has prepared the table. He says you can eat as much as you want and make no apologies for it. Get fat. I used to be told I look fat in the spirit. But that's a good thing because that means I've got a lot to give out so I'm giving everything I've got. So pastor, pastor, women of the house, She's stirring you to a place of jealousy. So provoke them. Provoke them. Every speaker who holds this mic, provoke them to a place that they will never want to return. Worshippers. Close your eyes to them and play for the king. For the king of glory. The king of glory who's mighty in battle. Let the king come, for he inhabits the praises of his people. Usher in the praises. Does anybody else got anything to share? of the burning of the fire because the burning is going to burn out those impurities God is a holy God so we must be holy and that fire purifies us and brings purification and it causes us to be clean and it causes us to stand in his presence upright and, and in righteousness and um, anyone that wants to be close to him has got to be purified and, and consecrated and, and pure before him, with a pure heart. He said, worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. We can't just declare with our mouth, yes. you know. We have to, it has to be a heart thing. Yes. Um, we, can, you can, we can jump up and down and we can get excited, but when we leave here, is our heart yes. for him? Yes. Are, we, are we hyped off of the, everyone's having a good time, we're laughing, we're cutting up, you know. But is it, is it from your heart? Do you really want him in your heart? Are you willing to go through some things to be closer to God? Are you willing to let go of some people to be closer to God? Are you willing to let go of a job? Are you willing to let go of a house? Are you willing to let go of the money in your purse? Are you willing to let go of...
hurt, we get upset, God has those emotions too. When his children turn their back on him, it hurts him. God has a heart that breaks too. So when we say, I'll do it, God, I'll do it, and he gets excited, I can really count on this person. And then we go out and, and, and we, we, we mess up and we stumble. And sometimes we don't have to do that. We really have to have it made up in our mind that we're going to serve him wholeheartedly, 100% in character, in purity, in integrity, and in truth. I got into Heidi Baker's conference, too. I want everybody to know. <laughs> so, so, it was pretty amazing, though. No, I just, um, I just felt like, I know the word was for all of us, Rose, but um, I just felt like the Lord had you on my wall <laughs> in my private time with him. And the things I'm trying to balance and the things I'm trying to do and staying in, in, in relationship, you know. Um, so I kind of felt like, you know, Jesus gave me a right hook and then a left hook. <laughs> so, so, but it was good because the way Daddy does it is so in love. And there's no, I don't feel condemned or anything like that. I feel completely free and I feel valued and I feel loved and I just feel like uh, I do feel refreshed. So I, I know that um, that's a good way to say it. Amen. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's. I just know that for us ladies that it is a crucial time for us. With everything that's going on, and I know that just, I believe that it hasn't just been some of the ladies in our ministry here, that there's just been this intimidating spirit trying to come against us. And it has no place. And the more we're on our face, the more boldness we're going to have. And it's, it's, you know, my husband spoke last Sunday about speaking into our next season, speaking into now, now speaking into our next season. But I think it's even more than that. I think we need to start doing now because what we do now is going to be our next season. So I just thank the Lord for everything that's been brought forth tonight, Father God. You're just such a good daddy, and I just feel like, you know, it's like really even hard to leave here tonight. So you don't have to. <laughs> I'll stay with you. <laughs> I'm all about pajama parties. <laughs> Everybody's been in my room, they know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mary, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 Who? You? <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm smashed and sober all at the same time, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so, um. Just be blessed. <laughs> Journal. Yeah. If you don't, please do. It's so important. <sighs> How do I say goodnight? I'm not a I'm not a person that says goodbye or goodnight. <laughs> Yeah, we all, everybody look at each other and say, we love you.
We love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Miss Joyce. <laughs> you told Mr. Carlton I love you. <laughs> so, and we'll see everybody back at 7. We can all stay here. I'm being serious. 